You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for February 19th, 2021. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the world headquarters of the Cornfield Resistance, where we appear to be the only two people in America who are not unpaid advisors to the Lincoln Project, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Blue Gal. Hey, Drift Glass. How are you doing? Well, it, it's really convenient not to have to resign from the Lincoln Project. It I, is. I was busy this week. <laughs> it is. Well, I watched. I watched at least one person that I will talk about in a while resign and then come back. Oh Lord! But they decided. I think that when you write a book saying that it was all a lie, how the Republican Party lied and lied, and I was part of that lie, and I shouldn't lie anymore. To have fallen for the same thing twice mm-hmm. might sort of undercut your credibility as someone you should listen to. So, mm. well, let's uh, stop. Let's stop talking for a minute and do some shout outs because yeah, we really yeah. got some very important shout outs. We do. Uh, first of all, we want to shout out to two Texans who have been through it this week. If they have. Uh, Tex Betsy, who is a published author now, she uh, published at JewishTimes.com uh, a, an account of her time this week in Texas yeah. and what the challenges were and how hard it was. And so we're grateful to her for doing that. Uh, it's Betsy, and you can go take a look at her article in JewishTimes.com. Um, and, of course, Tammy, our angel nerd, who's in Austin. And, uh, yep, she's been through it, too. Yep. You know, boiling Boy. water, the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, any of you out there who are dealing with, uh, especially the boiling water stuff, is really horrible. Uh, all of it is bad, but that breakdown of the water system is just dreadful. And we're thinking about you, and you're in our thoughts, and we love you. Hang in there. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then we have some birthday wishes for family members that we want we to do. talk about. Yeah. You start. You start and talk well, about your family member. Today, She's my family member, too. She but. is. She's your family member now, so you're stuck with her. <laughs> uh, uh, to my uh, my older sister, who lives on a mountaintop in Arizona, uh, who's a wonderful person. And I'm so glad it didn't fall to me to pick my family because <laughs> uh, I've made so many poor decisions in my in my, in my my youth about – who to befriend and who, what to join and what not to do that. I think if I'd been asked to pick family members, I would have screwed up really badly, but I got really lucky because I got the brother I got and the sister I got and the mm-hmm. mom I got. Mm-hmm. And my sister is amazing. Uh, she is a, a, a pioneer. Uh, she and her husband are, are awesome and their kids, my nephews are terrific and I can't say enough good things about her. She's a knitter. And she's a hiker, and she supports all the local businesses in her town. And she's been locked up on a mountaintop with her husband for a year and hasn't killed anyone yet, which is pretty <laughs> she impressive. Is, she is. She knits and spins, and mm. she figured out that you were dating somebody because you were wearing a hand-knit scarf. Yes. Wait a minute. Wait, Wait a, a minute. minute. What's this? Is Who made hand- this for you? Who is, is it, this? Who is made that- this thing? This is handmade. Yeah. What happened? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, see. No, that's handmade. Don't lie. <laughs> that's right. And by the stitch work, I can tell she's left-handed. She's, and- she's very talented. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she figured you out pretty early on uh, mm-hmm. about that. And then we want to sing happy birthday. Say happy birthday. I won't sing, but say happy birthday to my dad. My dad is 85 years old this week and is still doing the New York Times crossword puzzle and finishing it Mm -hmm. every single day. Yep. Uh, Very sharp guy, wonderful artist, still making paper and doing little booklets. He makes little day books, little notebooks and postcards and funny art and is... uh, he just has a great time. He's yeah. very creative and uh, a real model for me in terms of uh, maintaining sanity, I think, <laughs> when it, when all around you is losing yeah. it. Uh, he does really well with that. And, and yeah, that New York Times crossword puzzle is a big thing. We call each other and he he gets them all and finishes them and is very frustrated when when there's one thing that he doesn't get. And, you know, they've changed the New York Times crossword puzzle in the past little while. Yeah. Uh, no. To make it more um, less old white man fuddy duddy and right. a little more culturally relevant, and 
uh, you would think that would make someone like my dad, an old white guy, upset. But I think actually he likes it because it makes the puzzles harder for him. Yeah. And so, <laughs> you know, you can't just guess everything. It do- doesn't, no, you know, 15 letter word for Albanian Lake. Oh, I know that one. Yeah. <laughs> And he just okay. writes them in. <laughs> I've noticed that mentions of Dwight Eisenhower have dropped yeah. off precipitously. <laughs> it's yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Right, right. There's more rap lyrics and more hmm. uh, art and music and and different, more relevant cultural modern things in the puzzle these days. So you and I had a list of four things we were going to talk about this week, Drift Glass. And then I realized early, early this morning that Last week, when we recorded the podcast, Donald Trump had not been acquitted. Oh, right. excuse me. We're supposed to call him the former guy. Former. Yeah, that's what hey. President Biden has decided. The nickname wow. is now the former guy. And uh, that's a great name. So the former guy has been acquitted by a rigged jury. Right. Jury nullification. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, that was the and the game was given away by uh, none other than. Um, Cancun Ted, Ted Cruz, mm-hmm. uh, who mm-hmm. went on his podcast and uh, was was kicking back and, and sharing his thoughts and saying, look, you know, he, I went on and told the lawyers for uh, for Trump, uh, just, just back off. Just don't even bother. Don't 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 sweat yourself, because here's the thing. Um, it's a done deal. Th- this this trial's over. So just quit shouting and embarrassing yourself because the, the, the it's all rigged. He's going to get off. Doesn't matter what happens. Just chill out. And it's all taken care of. You don't have enough votes to uh, not acquit, so there's no right. there are not enough votes to convict. So forget it. Yeah, right, it's over. It's over. It's, it's a foregone conclusion. And that so. is a victim and a juror in that trial going in and telling the defense attorneys, "Your client's going to get off. Don't worry about don't it. Worry. Don't worry." And it's of, and of course that's exactly what happened. Donald yeah. Trump was acquitted uh, and immediately turned around and started you know celebrating his his total giant exoneration. Victory. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Apparently he wasn't canceled because uh, we've heard from him at least a few times this week. He, he's managed to f- find a bottle to put a note in and throw it out to sea. And someone picked it up and read it aloud in front of a microphone. So mm-hmm. he and has to let him phone into Fox and Friends again. Yes, yeah. they do. Because they love that guy. Um, but yeah, we. Th- this is how fast this week has, has moved along. Uh, there, are, there were a bunch of big headlines and you and I were going, wait a minute. Donald Trump was acquitted on Saturday. Yeah. That's the damn yeah. to record. This, it's only been a week. Oh, my goodness. It's we only have been to, a week. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this, my gosh. The second impeachment and the second acquittal of the uh, worst traitor ever to occupy the Oval Office and acquitted by a party of traitors who uh, who hate this country passionately and mm-hmm. who are trying to wreck it. Yep. Um, that's yep. my TED talk for this. <laughs> my TED Cruz <laughs> talk for this week. Uh, the second big thing, of course, is Texas, which we alluded to already with our, with our friends from Texas, is – is an epic disaster. Um, it's also a perfect illustration of Republican leadership. It is. It is. And well, I got well, called well, cruel on Twitter for bringing up that Texas Republicans sitting in the cold and dark need to learn a lesson. Yeah. Well, and I get it. I I have sympathy for everyone who is suffering in Texas. I absolutely do. I also think this is pre- preventable, mm-hmm. predictable, and is a direct result of failed leadership. Right. And you can you can feel both of those things and say both of those things at the same time. We agree on this professional left podcast mm-hmm. with President Joe Biden that emergency aid should be dispatched immediately to Texas, mm-hmm. and that he's on the phone. He was been on the phone with Governor Abbott, mm-hmm. uh, who's a dreadful, destructive lunatic, uh, but who is the governor of the state of Texas, which is a state that elects such people. Um, saying, you know, what do you need? How fast can we get it to you? Just let us know. How can we help? As opposed to Donald Trump looking at California wildfires going, well, guess these fuckers are going to burn. You know, mm-hmm. should, should mm-hmm. have raked your forest, should dumbasses. Your forest. Yeah. Imagine if Joe Biden went down to Texas and started throwing paper towels at people. Yeah. or And, and, then, and, and then bitching on Twitter about Greg Abbott being an idiot, which he is. Yeah. But, but that's not going to help the people of Texas. And here's the thing. We think the Republican Party and the conservative movement, wall to wall, floor to ceiling, is an incredibly destructive force in this country Mm -hmm. that needs to be, as a political movement and as an intellectual whatever, needs to be eradicated from this country. Gone. Gone from history. Ash heap of history. But the people who are are members of the Republican Party deserve clean air, clean water, good streets, health care, and help in time of disaster. That's something that we as liberals 
believe right down to our little toes. And it is a, some, it is a thing that separates us from the party that believes that Donald Trump is the second coming of the Messiah. They really do enjoy watching people suffer. They really mm-hmm. do enjoy putting kids in cages. They really mm-hmm. do making they're, – they're a party that just has no policies at all. It's just making – own the libs. Make them cry. And if, if, it, if lighting the Constitution on fire or storming the Capitol or, or on so forth it will make libs cry, then that's what we'll do. And the, the example of that this week was, of course, Ted Cruz, who just walked away from his state and went on vacation because, fuck it, who needs me here? Governing is all about owning the libs. And having a podcast and and being an asshole because that's what Republicans, after forty years of Reaganism, have come mm-hmm. to believe governance is all about. Until governing things is, break, yep. Being a senator is about that. And yeah. and this is something Chris Hayes brought up on set on Thursday night. Uh, he had a long segment. He had Al Franken on. He had a bunch of people on um, talking about how all these people making excuses for Ted Cruz on the right mm-hmm. are actually making a certain amount of logical sense from the standpoint of Republican governance, that the purpose of a senator is to own the libs and Mm -hmm. vote in Washington. It's not to help anybody on the ground. You don't know. We don't, you know, uh, who was it? Ben Shapiro. What's he supposed to do? Go out with a blowtorch and throw out people's pipes? Well, that would have been nice. That would have been been more than he did by flying to Cancun. And uh, it, it really, this, the typical, uh, usual suspects coming out and saying, oh, no, Ted Cruz shouldn't apologize. He's doing his job right. on his podcast by calling out liberal traders. You know, that's right. his job. Right. Uh, Chris Hayes used to kind of put everything from this week's news in a bow, said that Ted Cruz thinks that he's Rush Limbaugh with a Senate seat. Uh-huh. And, and that's is. all you have to do. L- Rush Limbaugh died this week. Yeah, Rush Limbaugh's dead. So there, that happened. Um and you texted me uh, while I was out um, foraging for for acorns in the forest, mm-hmm. and I believe I responded with "Huh, huh." And we could talk more about Rush Limbaugh, but really, his his legacy speaks for itself. Right. the 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 only thing that is of interest to me about dead Rush Limbaugh this week is how equivocating um, never Trumpers are about him, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. he forces them. I mean, him dropping dead in such a public way after such a long period of time, after getting the Presidential Medal of Freedom yeah. from Donald Trump, forces them to acknowledge that Rush Limbaugh and the Republican Party and the conservative movement all existed prior to 2016. Yeah, Which is something that makes them very uncomfortable because their mm-hmm. whole lie, the lie that never Trumpers tell in every microphone in front of every microphone they're ever in front of is – all of this happened 2016 forward. The minute I left the party, the minute I left the movement, the minute I stepped off the boat, that's when everything went wrong. Before that, mm-hmm. who knows? It's all a mystery. And this forces them to sort of say, well, actually, there was this guy. Actually, there were a lot of guys. And there's a guy named Newt Gingrich uh, who were around since the 90s, mm-hmm. which begs the question, okay, between pick a date, 1994, 1990, 1988, and 2016, what the fuck were you up to? Mm-hmm. And that is a question mm-hmm. that our Never Trump friends will not answer, would rather pull their own tongues out of their skulls than talk about because it just, it fucks up their whole scam. So uh, Mr. Charlie Sykes, for example, uh, wrote an obituary, uh, which was very critical of Rush Limbaugh, but his it was what a lot of liberals don't understand is how much fun Rush Limbaugh was in the early days, you know, how much <laughs> fun it was. You know, back and, and he wouldn't talk about what was fun about Rush to like, play party music when people died of AIDS. Yes, you know, that punching fun, down, right? making fun yeah, of Negroes and liberals and, fun. Yeah. and feminazis. That's what was fun. That's what he's talking about. And the fact that Charlie Sykes owes his whole manhood to Rush Limbaugh, his whole fucking career as a decaffeinated Wisconsin Limbaugh knockoff is something he doesn't want to talk about. And then, you know, as happens, because we're we don't want to talk about history. Uh, stuff happened and time passed. And then Rush Limbaugh became bad. And no one knows when or why or what, but eventually uh, things changed. And we can't really say who or what or when, but that happened. And then that's, let's talk about that part. And it's such fucking dishonesty from people who whose only claim on the public microphone is now we're going to talk truth and unvarnished truth with the American people about what happened in the Republican Party. No, you're not. You're going to keep lying about it. Because you control the microphones. Anyway, that's the only thing about Rush Limbaugh that's of interest to me this week, um, except for one other thing. And that is Rush Limbaugh's greatest partner in crime for, for his entire career was David Brooks. 
because Rush Limbaugh was a metastasizing cancer. He and all of his imitators were a horrible, metastasizing, fascist cancer inside the American body politic as Republicans and conservatives. And they went crazier, and crazier, and crazier. And that could never have been accomplished with such success that eventually Donald Trump became president without people like David Brooks. Every time the Republicans manifested that part of their, their, their personality publicly, went in the New York Times and said, don't look at that. Don't look at that. That's not happening. That's not really true. That's not the Republican Party I know. That's not the conservative movement I know. Trust me, I know what's really going on. That's just a fringe. Ignore them. By the way, the left is worse. And, and Rush Limbaugh and his filth could never have polluted this country half as successfully without David Brooks and people like him lying to the American public from the pages of the New York Times about, the, about what was really going on in the GOP and sh kicking the shit out of liberals who were trying to warn this country what was happening. Done with that. Done and dusted. Shall we move on to a happier topic? Well, if you uh, if you want to geek out about Mars for like half an hour, I know. <laughs> <laughs> for, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to limit you. you. You've got a minute and a half. Talk about Mars. There's a helicopter on Mars and we put it there. There you go. Um, it, it was fucking awesome. I watched the whole thing on, uh, not in real time because there's an 11 minute lag, Blue Gal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I kept telling you. Yeah, and this is what they're doing now. This is this is the, this is this team, and this is that team, and all these space nerds and the kids who got their essays read aloud on the NASA camera. Um, and the, it, everything. And Doctor Rocker sent you a book. He did. Doctor Rocker sent me a giant book. It's 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 a scale model of outer space. It's, um, and it's like probably four foot by two foot. The whole yeah. the front cover of the book is is very large, coffee table size. It is space for nearsighted and. <laughs> Um, and, and you just kept going, wow, this wow, is awesome. this is great. And I, and I shall treasure it. And I, and I do yeah. treasure it. Um, but watching all of these relatively young people, many of whom do not have native American accents. We're not clearly not born right. here. Right. All working on this team, all geeking out together, all celebrating, all work their asses off, work their asses off through a pandemic, through a pandemic to yeah. bring this little machine, the size of a mini Cooper, just about. Uh, down in a very complicated way, perfectly, exactly where they were they were headed for, and then um, everything worked great. It all came off without a hitch, and they were cheering, and they were laughing, and they were crying, and they were high fiving each other, and it elbow was, punching mostly. It was, it was not glorious. not high fiving; no. they were elbow elbow, elbow bumping. <laughs> but it was glorious. It was yeah. absolutely glorious, and boy, and I don't know about you, but that is just exactly the shot of joyful. Oh my gosh, there are. Brilliant young people and older people out there doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. And the future is not necessarily all doom and apocalypse. There's right. good shit happening because smart people who apply their talents to it are getting it done. So bravo to NASA and all the people involved. All right. And love looking at those pictures and the tweets that coming back from Mars. And, oh, here's a rock. I can't mm -hmm. wait to find out whether it's sedimentary or not. <laughs> well, and, and honestly, all the kids who are asking questions are people who send in social media questions. Yeah. That's a great question, Phyllis. Let me tell you, <laughs> the reason we sat down there, we don't think there's life on Mars, but this is where a stream bed clearly was. And we'd like to find out about what, what went on there. Will the, will the helicopter be doing science? Well, not really, Marge. But you see, here's the thing. And it was just so much. Their communications people have to be as good yes. and have the added talent that many NASA scientists do not have. <laughs> That's true. Of That's... being able to talk to hum other human beings yeah. in a friendly and calm way. <laughs> well, I really did think of, I, I thought of my mom because my mom was a teacher for in, her entire life. And the way the these people who were in charge of talking about this we're, we're so good at taking a very complicated subject that could have been really just a bunch of dense nerd talk in real time mm -hmm. and explaining what was happening and why it was cool. And here's a, here's a person who worked on this and here's someone who knows about that in such a, uh, a easy to learn and, and fun way. That's the perfect classroom. That's what a perfect classroom looks like to me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Anyway, it, I was delighted and uh, and I hope it comes through in my voice because – no, oh, I think it does. Boy. Yeah, I think I think your space nerd comes through in your I voice. I am. I'm a space nerd from way back. Until okay. I figured out I was going to be very, very, very tall, I had yeah. delusions of being an astronaut. Then I realized, yeah. they oh. They don't have any six foot eight astronauts, no, that's for sure. No, not even cargo. <laughs> they wouldn't ship me up as cargo. No, sorry. No. <laughs> you can uh, sign up. I, I don't know how much it costs or what the deal is, but you can sign up to have a boarding pass with your name taken up to Mars on one of the 
Ooh. future trips, which would be kind of fun. That sounds like a GoFundMe. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it is. Well, something probably, along those lines. Probably something for Science Fiction University to take up. Yeah, we'll talk mm-hmm. about that. Uh, I am also interested that this week is the beginning of Lent. Yeah. We had Ash Wednesday. Didn't go to church this year. Not going to church until I have a shot or two shots or whatever. But uh, I am uh, doing a Lenten study and a practice and journaling and all the things that one can do during Lent. Um, I'm working on uh, journaling alongside a book called 40 Days with Dietrich Bonhoeffer, which, boy, doesn't that just sound like a lot of fun sitting in a Nazi (laughs) prison camp for 40 days? Because that's where Dietrich Bonhoeffer wound wound up. Uh, Those of you who don't know, Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a um, Lutheran pastor, uh, very much into social activism. Mm-hmm. And he was convicted of uh, engaging and being part of a plot to assassinate Adolf Hitler. Which he most definitely was. Which he most definitely was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Guilty of that. Yes, he was. And he uh, wound up in a Nazi prison camp. It was not a concentration camp. He was uh, treated fairly well in prison, given access to paper and pen and a place to write and adequate food, apparently. Uh, or certainly was able to write letters and send things out into the world because his papers and letters from prison are all published now. And uh, I'm not sure these days by our, by modern standards, how liberal Dietrich Bonhoeffer would be considered by the world. Uh, yeah. I don't think that matters. The, no. the lesson of Dietrich Bonhoeffer's life is courage in the face of fascism. And that's what he mm-hmm. had. Uh, and so I'm going along in this study, and one of the first things we were asked to write about in this book was about lessons and and what is the burden of being a follower of God and so forth. And I asked you about this because uh, how does one love Republicans? How does one, you know, love your enemies? That's one of the, the commands of the Bible and so forth. Mm-hmm. And here is Dietrich Bonhoeffer going through life and and looking at Adolf Hitler and making a plan to kill him, which is breaking mm-hmm. a commandment. Thou shalt not kill. That's a, a thing. And he made the decision that this had to happen and he had to be a part of it. And so you and I had a very interesting conversation about that. Yes, we did. Uh, and and you had some comments. Do you, you want to talk about that? Just the, the moral complexity of, of what happens when um, evil won't stop. Mm-hmm. And prayer isn't working. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. There's, the, I mean, we have this conversation in our. We have a Sunday school group that we meet with on Zoom every Sunday, mm-hmm. and the conversation frequently turns to, you know, the the the, the loving your neighbor and caring for the the weak and the sick and the imprisoned and so forth is all is all true and all valid. That's my faith. Mm-hmm. But the Bible is just shot through with also. And my enemies should burn in hell. Yeah. And my yeah. enemies should trip and fall in the trap they've set for me and rot. And God, please strike them all down and don't mm-hmm. let them go to heaven. <laughs> it's very clear that there are villains in there that are not, you know, almighty, right. crazy right. God, but right. people who are um, unsalvageable, mm-hmm. who are so deeply entrenched in their own madness and and sadism that they can't be recovered. And they, and they keep doing harm. And you have to stop people from doing harm. That's the essence of civilization is stopping people from hurting each other. That's pretty basic. And there is a political party in this country that won't stop being evil. And what do you do about that? And we talked about. Uh, we, are not, we are not advocating going out and murdering. No, 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 no. Please be clear. But we're, we're, but we're saying that there is a there is a point at which wishful thinking fails. Mm hmm. And prayer doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And what do you do if you are faced with some with an, with an evil that won't stop, that keeps coming, that keeps getting stronger, keeps getting worse, and all of the things you are trying to do? Um, let's just call it the Obama administration. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. all of the appease them, compromise with them, beg them to to be nice, offer them, extend to them a hand. Just try that to a fault, and all they do is is. You pull back a stump every time you offer them a hand. All they do is laugh at you, sabotage what you're trying to do, and try to hurt people to make you sad. Mm -hmm. And what do you do when those people won't stop? And Dietrich Bonhoeffer, in his case, was an extreme example of that. Mm -hmm. And and he – we talked about um, the example of cheap grace. Yeah. 
which we yeah. talked about on this podcast, and I've written about, and you've written about, which is the idea, which sort of runs in parallel to this, of people who do terrible things and want what's called cheap grace. I'm not perfect. I'm just forgiven, and I haven't washed in the blood of the Lamb. So I, whatever I did, I'm you know I can be sorry, but I'm just forgive. Yeah, we're all sinners. Don't judge we're all flawed. Me. Don't right. judge me. And the idea that and Dietrich Bonhoeffer said there's a difference between between uh, confession and repentance and atonement and then forgiveness. And just saying, oh, well, you're forgiven. You don't have to do mm-hmm. anything, say anything. Right. You don't have to take any risk. You don't have to admit you were ever wrong. You don't have to undo the damage you've done. None of that shit. You're just automatically forgiven for whatever it is you did over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And he said, and it, is, it is, as I said on Twitter, as if Jesus gives white people a, you can be a continual asshole card. Yeah. And there's a and whole branch of Christianity that believes that. Yes. <laughs> and, and they run the Republican Party. Yes. And, and this week, um, uh, Anand Giri Haradas, I believe mm-hmm. I have that correct, um, is a media person. He writes for Time and he he has very tall hair. You will <laughs> yes, notice he does. It, it, it's sky high hair. And he's an excellent writer and he he's also on MSNBC every now and then. And he wrote a very long column that looked real familiar to me, um, which is all about why the hell are we keep we keep offering ouchless redemption and forgiveness with no confession, no atonement, no nothing to the same fucking Republicans and conservatives and pundits every time they fuck up, which is always that teaches them nothing. If they don't, if they don't, if they don't, if they don't suffer for it, if they don't, if they're not punished for it, if they're not held accountable for it, then they never stop doing it. Right. And it is. And refreshing. there's always money for it, by sure. the way. It's not just it's not just. Yeah, you can come back in and be, be in the good graces and be on television. It's lucrative to continue yeah. to do what you're doing. Yes. Well, and, and he does the thing that you're not supposed to do, which is he went goes all the way back to the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> he goes all the way back to the Iraq war and says, wait a minute, yeah. all these people who were touting the Iraq war and slandering the shit out of people who opposed the war and were just beating the drums and and getting rewarded for it. They paid no price at all. In fact, most of them were put in really responsible, really influential jobs all over the media. You'll mm-hmm. find them on the Atlantic. You'll find them on the editorial boards. You'll find them in the New York Times. Nothing happened to them at all. And all they did was just pretend the past never happened. Let's move on. Yeah. These people learned nothing. And now we're doing it again. Mm-hmm. We're doing it again with all the same people, all the same party, all the same clowns who learned nothing the first time or the second or the third or the fourth. And that's very bad. Mm-hmm. We should stop doing that. Right. And I couldn't agree more. In fact, if you've ever read my blog, you'll know that I write about this subject rather a lot and how mm-hmm. it's not just dumb. It's it's dangerous mm-hmm. because you're mm-hmm. letting a mad dog off the hook over and over again. And all that teaches them is it's okay to bite. And we should stop doing that. So it's kind of nice to see one's thoughts uh, that one has held and written about for going on 16 years now, starting to mm-hmm. pop up little green shoots here and there in the media. I like to see it. It'd be great to be, you know, not kicked off Twitter forever so I could respond to it directly. But I guess <laughs> it's important that we cancel you're people. You're writing like, more and more every week because I, you're I'm not being on read Twitter. I'm by less and less, which is kind of, you know, kind of depressing. But what are you going to do? Now, you wanted to talk a little bit about um, Father Coughlin, I believe. Well, just for a second, and then I want to read this letter that adam kinzinger got this week oh yeah, it, yeah, yeah. just to put a bow again putting right. another bow on everything we've been talking about mm-hmm. uh you know today we're recording on friday today is the anniversary of the executive order that imprisoned japanese american citizens mm-hmm. during world war ii and uh that was a historical wrong uh we should be ashamed of it mm-hmm. and we should remember uh, that times Roosevelt was able to do things that were clearly wrong and unconstitutional, mm-hmm. <laughs> period. One of the things that was also, I'm sure, unconstitutional was uh, that Roosevelt did was uh, he kicked Father Coughlin off the air <laughs> and forbade, somehow, forbade Father Coughlin to mail his newsletter. Distribute it by mail. He f- he made it possible for the federal government to prevent Father Coughlin from mailing his newsletter mm-hmm. to the to anyone. Uh, it was 1939. World War II had broken out in Europe, and Father Coughlin, a Roman Catholic preacher who, very much like Rush Limbaugh, populist, entertaining, had upwards of thirty to forty million listeners in the thirties in mm-hmm. the radio on the radio. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, and he, again, at the beginning, he was a populist. He was looking for nationalization of railroads. He wanted labor rights protected. He believed in, you know, power for the poor. And that got him popular. And then all of a sudden he was an anti-Semite and liked Hitler and thought order should come to the universe in this way. Mm -hmm. And that made uh, <laughs> for a lot of problems for him. And and it was considered by Roosevelt to be part of the public good uh, to kick him off the air. And that's what the Roosevelt administration did. Wait a minute. Was he canceled by the Roosevelt administration? He was canceled. Oh, he was no. literally canceled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and so um, I I don't defend anything that Father Coughlin said later in his career. Mm -hmm. uh, and certainly it was um, in the interest of the United States to keep anti-Semitism off the air and uh, pro-Hitler propaganda off the air. But Certainly, it was unconstitutional to do that. Um, let's switch over to uh, this letter from the Adam Kinzinger Kinzinger's letter. family. Yeah, uh, which one of the reasons that it became public was, and I, I think Adam Kinzinger made it public as well. But uh, I think he did. He made this woman who wrote it mailed it to everybody, including the entire Republican House coalition in Illinois. Mm -hmm. Mail it to all of the Republican colleagues that Adam Kinzinger has in Illinois. You guys know Adam Kinzinger is an Illinois House member, Republican, who voted uh, pro-impeachment for Trump. This has time. been outspoken against Trump mm -hmm. and uh, is not your friend. No. He, he voted against Obamacare. He uh, voted to repeal and replace Obamacare. He's voted with Trump over 90 percent of the time on Republican policies. And uh, the fact that he is pro-democracy now is great. And as I said last week, people should send him a postcard thanking him for his support of democracy. Mm -hmm. But you do not have to send him money for his political action committee. No, no. Uh, because he will vote again to cut Social Security or whatever it is that the Republican agenda is. Uh, tax cuts for billionaires, whatever. And, and of course, very anti-women's rights and so forth. Um but this letter, and the, I want to be clear, the, I'm not reading this letter out loud on the podcast. I, the minute I saw it, I knew I wanted to read the whole thing on the air. The reason I'm doing it is not for shits and giggles. It's not to point fun at it. It's to point out how pernicious this kind of fake Christianity is, how counter to the teachings of Christianity it is. And, uh, well, I'll just read it. And um, I'm not... Parts of it, you know, it's easy to laugh at it, but uh, when you realize that this letter is a genuine, this isn't parody, this is really how this person feels, and this is right. really how sh she felt so confident in writing this letter that she could mail it to, and make it public, mail it to everybody. And and multiply this letter by 70 million. Well, by, I would say tens of thousands at least. I'm not, I don't think every Trump voter is religious. No, uh, this, every Trump vote, every <clears throat> Trump voter believes some of this letter for sure. Yeah, there, there's that's what I meant. Multiply yeah. this letter, the sentiment, the yeah, intention some of the of sentiments this in, in particular, absolutely uh -huh. would be would be considered, you know, Republican gospel, and I mean that with with all of the puns intended. All right, Adam, oh my, what a disappointment you are to us and to God. We were once so proud of your accomplishments. Instead, you go against your Christian principles and join the devil's army, Democrats and the fake news media. How do you call yourself a Christian when you join the devil's army believing in abortion? We thought you were smart enough to see how the left is brainwashing so many so-called good people, including yourself and many other GOP members. You have even fallen for their socialism ideals. So, so sad. President Trump is not perfect, but neither are you or any of us for that matter. It is not for us to judge or be judged, but he is a Christian. If God can forgive and use King David in the Bible, he can do the same with President Trump. Franklin Graham, Robert Jeffries, just to name a few of many pastors who mentor President Trump, know that he is a believer. Obviously, you did not hear President Trump's Christmas message to the American people. 
fake news media did not cover his me- his message where he actually gave the plan of salvation instructing people how to repent and ask the savior into their heart to be born again to believe in John 3:16 when was the last time you proclaimed your faith, Adam? Oh, we forget. You now belong to the devil's army. Mm-hmm. You won't you won't convince us otherwise with your horrible, rude accusations of President Trump. To embrace a party that believes in abortion and socialism is the ultimate sin. We should list even more grievances against you, but decided you are not worth more of our time to list them. We have said enough. You should be very proud that you have lost the respect of Lou Dobbs, Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity, Laura Ingram, Greg Kelly, etc., and most importantly in our book, Mark Levin and Rush Limbaugh, and us. It is now most embarrassing to us that we are related to you. You have embarrassed the Kinzinger family name. We are not judging you. (laughs) Wow. I'm sorry. There I lost it. We are not judging you. This letter is our opinion of you. Oh, by the way, good luck in your fundraising endeavors. We are sure there are many other good GOP and Christian supporters that feel the same way we do. And then they put, we know this. How very disappointed with the many other GOP that have sided with the Democrats. We should demand our money back. The following Kinsingham family members have asked that their names be added to this letter. P.S. For your information, many more family members feel the same as we do. They just didn't have the courage to sign our letter or write their own letter. Not us. We are thoroughly disgusted with you. Oh, by the way, we are calling for your removal from office. I have received numerous calls concerning your actions and egregious behavior toward our President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. President Trump has done more for the American people in four years than you, the rhinos, and the Democrats have done in years. CC, many conservative Republicans. And it's signed by Greg and Karen Otto. Well, and uh, I, I mean, have a question. Yeah. Uh, is many Republicans related to many people? Many people, probably. Yeah. yeah. Uh, tremendous amount of idolatry in that oh, letter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and he disappointed Rush. I think he probably killed Rush Limbaugh. Honestly, yeah. I think I think the heartbreak from losing Adam Kinzinger's respect might have been what did it for Rush Limbaugh. Might have put him away. So, uh, this was written before Rush Limbaugh died, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but um, most importantly, in our book, Mark Levin and Rush Limbaugh is quite a uh, quite a statement. And and just the theology of that letter that uh, the part about King David. If if God can use King David, God can use Donald Trump is an acknowledgement of the level of sin that Donald Trump is engaged in and that she knows he is engaged in. Right. But Democrats are worse. Democrats are worse. And God. And, and they believe in abortion. And God right. speaks to her personally, which is great. <laughs> That's fucking amazing. That hasn't happened in thousands of years. <laughs> but the, she's not judging. This no. is her opinion. This is not the book of Judges. This is the book of Revelations, Adam. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and it, but it is that it is that cowardice, that sort of that seeping level of don't you can't judge me for judging you because I'm not judging you because judging is wrong. It's just my opinion. We all have the right to our opinions. Just ask Tucker Carlson. I can believe mm-hmm. anything I want, and you can't do otherwise. And it is a disease. It is a it is a viral mental disease that has spread to tens of millions of people and there's no cure for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no way to stop them from thinking this. There's no way to slow them down. Anytime you object to it, they just get weirder and stronger and angrier. The only thing you can do is deprive them of power. Yeah. And uh, so can we talk about someone very briefly who sure. has uh, bent himself away from the Republican party Sure. Uh, State Senator Jim Hendren from Arkansas. Yeah, that's <laughs> uh, did an over nine minute video explaining why he is leaving the Republican Party. And guess what, Drift Glass? Hmm. What, what? He's an independent. Oh, he's an independent now. Oh, that's so that's so nice. There's Very so many special. independents. Yeah. Uh, and he's an independent, and he's starting a group called Common Sense Arkansas because oh, they great. all have to start a group, and it's already got a logo. And a flag and a thing and a th- and a, you know 
a GoFundMe or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's all set, and you and other people can join him. And, and what is his what's run that, for governor? I'm sure. What's know? that thing in art where you paint over an old painting to use the canvas again? I don't know. Um, <laughs> if you peel back that, you're going to find a Tea Party label under that new sure. new sign. I guarantee you. But please continue. Well, I don't. You know, it's a different kind of thing. the The purpose of the Tea Party was to forget about George W. Bush. Just forget him. Well, pretend you pretend it totally wasn't you. brand new. You had nothing to do with it. Right. La 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 la. Mm-hmm. This is more of a rejection because you can't ignore that Donald Trump exists because he's still talking. Right. So you do have to actually reject Donald Trump and the Proud Boys and et cetera. But you can't say, I don't believe in uh, traditional conservative values right. of, and he goes on in, in this nine minute thing about my first vote was for Ronald Reagan and wasn't that awesome. And I'm a, I'm a, constitutional conservative and i'm i believe in fiscal responsibility and strong national defense and uh, it just goes on i I hate abortion so much well he doesn't mention that but Mm -hmm. i went and looked this is uh yeah jim hendren i looked at his voting record and the bills that he co-sponsored and the bills that he was involved in and voted in favor of and that's all online you can find it as a state rep and a state senator in arkansas and it is. He he was more liberal than his party on health care uh, in terms of, again, rebranding Obamacare to not be about Obama. No, no. So bad. that he could keep rural hospitals open sure. in Arkansas because reality da- dawned on him that if I don't take this federal money, our hospitals are going to close. So, you know, they came up with a branding thing of Arkansas Health or Arkansas Connect or what. I mean, it's like you said, Kentucky did the same thing. Right. They did KY Connect um, and made it not an Obama program. Take the Obama label and stink off of it and then pretend it's from you. Pretend right. that the state legislature did it. And it it's to keep hospitals open. And he was railed by conservative Republicans in Arkansas as a traitor for voting yes for health care for poor people in Arkansas. He mm-hmm. was absolutely took a hit for that and is con- was considered by a lot of people. I, there are articles on the Internet about what a terrible, terrible liberal Jim Hendren is for voting with Obama on health care. The rest of his voting record is abortion, guns, and a voter ID. Yeah. And yeah. let's make sure university employees in the state – can do concealed carry. <laughs> Jesus. Because Christ. if any of your students get out of line. Right. You want you want to object to that grade? Are you sure you want to do that? You feel lucky, punk? Huh? Oh no, that's fine. Give me a D. I deserve it. It's okay. Uh, anyway, so here it, you know, and then of course, your friend and mine, uh the um conser- the guy who's rebranding the entire Republican Party and having a big meeting with uh, Bloody Bill Crystal down in Florida. Oh, yes, 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 yes. There's a whole conservative a whole summit to the of future of conservative. I think it's called the Project for a New American Century, but nope. I could be wrong. <laughs> no, I don't know. Is, and, you know. Nobody's using that right now. Why Evan aren't we just McMullen. recycle that? Yeah. Evan McMullen. You That's know. right. We're going to create Evan. a new conservative party that doesn't like Trump, isn't Trumpy, but embraces conservative values and, of course, has no problem with tax cuts for billionaires or judges from the Federalist Society. All that's fine. It, it, it just now occurred to me what this reminds me of. And this mm-hmm. won't surprise you at all. It's not, a, it's not West Wing, I promise. Mm-hmm. It's the end of The Godfather. Where, yeah. do you reject Trump and all of his pomps? Oh, yes, I reject him. <laughs> While you're out doing all the heinous shit behind the <laughs> scenes that you would have done anyway. You're, you're knocking off the, the heads of the five families. You're going to you know, send your, your son-in-law, you know, uh, your, your brother-in-law to the grave. Uh, but you're sitting there in church saying, oh, no, I reject the devil. Uh, don't worry. I, I, I accept the Lord. And it is so clear that these people only object to Donald Trump outing them and their party as the shithole it always was. They don't mm-hmm. want to change anything else about any of their behavior. They just want to elevate the, the vocabulary into a lot of gassy talk about patriotism and America and traditional values and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And can't mm-hmm. we all agree that we're independents now and Donald Trump was some fucking aberration and no one knows where he came from or where he's gone, um, which is uh, we're probably going to work. Honestly, uh, we don't have a media in this country anymore that holds 
uh, Republicans accountable for anything they do. They find a villain, they they tack that villain to the wall, but all of this other shit that they, or they just make them disappear, George Bush who, um, but all the rest of them scatter to the four winds and reconstitute themselves and come back mm-hmm. exactly as they were before, but this time, you know, completely forgiven. And and it, now it's it's breaking the rules of the game to mention who they were and what they believed beforehand, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. brings us, if you don't mind, just for no, a I don't mind. You let me let me turn on my timer here because I'm okay. going to give you just three minutes on the Lincoln Project. Go okay. ahead. Well, the uh, Lincoln Project, <laughs> as you might know, has imploded. Um, uh, many of its members are heading for the hills. Uh, a lot of people have quit. A couple have quit and come back. Um. They're in. They have done what you do when you your organization has cratered. They have issued statements, probably vetted by their lawyers, saying we are going to outsource an investigation into all of this, and we'll get back to you. Um, they are no longer uh, showing up with any degree of frequency on their usual haunts on television. Once again, I you know I have to say, if you gave liberal bloggers a couple of hundred million dollars in free publicity over six years, we could have been those people for them. Uh, but that's not something the media wanted to do. They wanted to give all of the time and attention and money to these guys. And so the so they have a problem with their co-founder. They have a problem with finance. They have a problem with cover-ups. And even Frank Bruni uh, in the New York Times <laughs> wrote a long editorial about maybe we were a little hasty in letting them off the hook and not looking at their past and not looking at what they were doing and just sort of accepting them at face value. That might have been a mistake. Certain journalists... Among many journalists, I among many journalists, and my solution was, hey, here's a thought. Don't hire those journalists. Hire the people who actually thought we should look at the entire spectrum of their belief when they suddenly decided the Republican Party was full of Republicans was a shock to them and what they've done since then. I think that's a fair assessment of what I've been doing for the last four years. And for my troubles, I have been blocked by everyone at the Lincoln Project. On the other hand, I have been listening to the Lincoln Project podcast Mm -hmm. since this all happened. And I really need right now, I don't know if we can do it, a flourish of trumpets, uh, fan, <laughs> fanfare for the common man, uh, <laughs> because the latest episode of the Lincoln Project was like 24 minutes long. It's not very long. Um, states the following. First of all, the Lincoln Project was summoned by destiny. <laughs> don't know if you knew that, Blue Gal. Yes, they were. <laughs> History chose us to save our great republic. Yeah. And, it, and it goes through uh, several points that they would like you to believe. One is, all this started four years ago, mm-hmm. period, uh, full mm-hmm. stop. Uh, two, Democrats do not know how to fight. They're incapable of defending themselves. They're incapable of doing anything. Uh, three, we stopped Trump. We did that. We were summoned by destiny to save the republic, and we are the ones who saved this country, so you're welcome. Number four, the left, that, that's you and me, Blue Gal. Yeah. Do not understand the kind of threat we're up against. We are stupid. We don't get how dangerous Republicans are now, how dangerous Trump was, and how <sighs> dangerous his movement is. Liberals just don't fucking get it. We do because we built them, but liberals have no fucking idea because you and I don't exist, Blue Gal. The entire blogosphere doesn't exist. The entire um, corpus of liberal writing about the right going back decades doesn't exist. The fact that liberals were embargoed from the mainstream media for saying exactly this shit up until four years ago when they suddenly discovered the Lincoln Project people and the Never Trumpers. None of that ever happened. It's just all gone from memory. And number five, of course, you got to have both sides, right? Right. We are being attacked because we threatened the D.C. establishment. Both the crazies on the right and, and I'm quoting, the professional left. When you played that for me last night. And he and he said the professional left doesn't get how we are being attacked by them. And uh, it using uh, the name of our podcast, I just had a little glow in my heart. Shout out to <laughs> us from from uh, from Rick Wilson. Rick Wilson. Um, it was from, Rick Wilson saying the professional left doesn't get it. Yeah, from, from the depths of his Confederate flag covered cooler, Seriously? Rick Wilson <laughs> has stood up to shout out to the professional left. And and it is and if you go out as I do because I I think it's my job to do this because nobody else wants to do it certainly my allies don't want to do it going through all of the people who are like dude man you were the best nobody ever fought for the, it was all great you, there's 
every there's no objective evidence that the Lincoln Project did anything in the last election except collect a hundred million dollars. Mm-hmm. They, they all of the things they said they were going to do, they blew it. They blew it, and nobody, nobody mentions this. Well, drift class, I, w- I want to say that I think that the connection between what the Lincoln Project is saying, their mission is. Uh-huh. And what Ted Cruz thinks governing as a Republican senator is are very much connected. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That the Lincoln Project's job, and it's something that those guys are really good at, is just trolling people on the Internet. Yeah. And they trolled Donald Trump on the Internet for a few years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was very snappy, got a lot of attention and retweets and clicks and Mm -hmm. likes. Yeah. And money. Yes, yeah. money, because it's entertaining to watch well, Donald Trump get called out on Twitter. It's entertaining. I, I just want to interrupt to say, mm-hmm. and because they were gifted open seating on every cable news program for the right. last four years, which right. is something that they have never done for the left, ever. Yeah. The, the whole MSNBC push before Trump really screwed them in the ass was, look how right we're leaning. Oh, my God, here's Hugh yes. Hewitt. Look over yes. here. They wanted nothing to do with us at all. Yeah. I was told. Through a second party that we that that they were aware of the writing on the left and they didn't want to touch it with a ten foot pole because mm-hmm. it was too shrill mm-hmm. for prime time. They wanted mm-hmm. nothing to do with us. And now that everything we warned them about has come true, who do they turn to to come on and tell the truth about the right? The same fuckers who built the thing. And the deal is handshake deals. We won't mention the past, and you'll talk shit about Trump, and everybody will go home in a limousine. Mm-hmm. That's exactly mm-hmm. what happened. They all went mm-hmm. home in limousines. They didn't do yeah. anything. They didn't flip any Senate seats. They didn't defeat Donald Trump. They didn't lower. They, they didn't lower the Republican turnout. But they all got rich, which I guess was the. I guess was the goal. Have a paycheck. That's right. That's right. We can't end this show without mentioning that uh, Mitch McConnell told the truth and said that Trump ordered the code red and nearly got Mike Pence killed. And by the way, somebody should really do something about that. Somebody should do something about that. <laughs> <laughs> not us, because that's not our job in any way, size, shape, or form. And yeah, Republicans in disarray with Donald Trump calling uh, McConnell meanie names and uh, McConnell saying, yeah, you pretty much got your vice president endangered. Uh, and yet you're not hearing that on the mainstream media, that the Republican no. Party is is fracturing as we speak, right? Well, and, and Mitch McConnell's other remarks, mm-hmm. which were not taken up and shouted from the rooftops by the liberal media. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is from a Wall Street Journal op-ed, and I'm quoting Mitch McConnell, pretty much you know, co-equal in time to his, his affirmation that Donald Trump was a threat and tried to get people killed, and it's all his fault. He's saying this in the Wall Street Journal, this selective disregard for rules and norms is a civic disease that is spreading through the political left. Because it's what? both sides, blue gal. Mm-hmm. It's both sides that are doing it. And that's what Mitch McConnell's doing. He needs to have um, the vast majority of the lunatics on in his party who think Donald Trump is a god king come to the polls in the fall. But he also needs to make his donors happy. And he's doing that by just talking out of both sides of his mouth. Right, right. Telling right. each side what they want to hear, knowing for a fact that no one's going to put the two halves together and say, but you're, you're, just, you're lying horribly all over the place because we don't hold Republicans accountable for things mm-hmm. in this country. That's mm-hmm. not what we do. So, and I'm sure, again, he'll get away with it because- they're the Republicans, and this is what they do. This is their brand. Um, I also wanted to mention in the good journalism, bad journalism category, the Wall Street Journal, the same journal that had Mitch McConnell shitting on the left for trying to enforce the this law. Is the Rupert, this is the Rupert Murdoch Wall Street Journal, yeah. by the way. Yeah, uh, They reported with alarm that Interior Secretary nominee Deb Haaland, who would be the first Native American cabinet secretary, has joined the pipeline protests and opposes fracking. They, <gasps> yeah. They said this with a frowny face. And John Cornyn was tweeting about it as if it were the end of the world. Um, Once again, don't threaten us with a good time. Right, Um, right. (laughs) Bernie Sanders turned around and said, this is awesome. And I agree with Bernie Sanders. Uh, Just like the idea. And a whole bunch of uh, environmental groups were like, this is exactly what the interior secretary should be doing is in protecting the interior. Uh, One one group uh, tweeted, please confirm her immediately. (laughs) Yes. Um, I think we're probably running short on time. We are. Why don't you just give us a 50 cent tour of why Bill Crystal remains the most unself aware organism on earth? I, I wrote about this last week, um, he, or the week before last, on the Bulwark podcast. I heard him say these words um, any decent person um, would apologize 
for the terrible things that have happened if, if I inadvertently contributed to them. He's advising Republicans to say, you're sorry if you make a mistake. <laughs> and then he goes on to say, I don't think all of these cases were so inadvertent, but that would at least be the minimal thing one would do. I was trying to think about myself or you or anyone, you know, in a similar situation who's done something pretty bad. You mean like be an Iraq war pimp? Yeah. And, 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 <laughs> and how bad would it be to just turn around and say, you know, I'm really sorry. I regret that. It was a mistake. Um, but he's like furious because none of these people have done this. None of them. And I had the audacity to look up Bill Crystal's record on the Iraq war. Yeah. And he has a long record of not just ignoring it, but saying, fuck you. I'm not apologizing. I was right. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He, he snapped at uh, the Iraq war opponents or the apolo- He refused to, to walk back in 2014. Um, despite his history of being wrong, he said, this is all hogwash. Um, I think it was Carl Bernstein who said apologies would be in order for neoconservatives who banged the war drums so disastrously. And Crystal replies, hogwash. Um, Bernie Sanders, about whom you heard on this podcast just recently, came to Bill Crystal in 2019 and said, have you apologized to the nation for your foolish advocacy of the Iraq war yet? And Bill Crystal says, and I quote, nope, I just like quasi-Stalinist demands for apologies. <laughs> Fuck you, Bill Crystal. Hey, there. That's a great place to end it. In national news, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez is now officially Texas's best senator. Jesus, Jesus Christ. She raised a million dollars in a day for the people of Texas, for yeah. direct aid to the people of Texas. But fair enough. Uh, Ted Cruz booked a flight back to Texas from Cancun. So, you know. <laughs> There's not a lot of people there that want him back, though. No. What, what, what happened to this wall we were supposed to have, Lou Gal? Going to Mexico? Are you kidding me? During a pandemic? Yeah. You know what You know what Joe Biden's doing today during a pandemic? Golfing? He's, no. Well, he might be. I don't know if the, no, Pfizer, not. If the Pfizer factory has a miniature golf course out back. Maybe he's shooting there. <laughs> but he's actually going to the Pfizer factory and talking about the importance of vaccines and the speed of doing so and everything that's going on right now. And People should just be cool, and we're working as hard as we can, and here are the experts. Um, we have noticed increased activity in terms of vaccinations yes. in Illinois. Yes, we have. They are opening a new vaccination location at the state fairgrounds here in Springfield, which is a great place to do it because they are used to corralling a very large group of cars. Mm-hmm. All at once yes. at that location. Mm-hmm. And the National Guard is being put in charge of uh, navigating and arranging that whole process. So it will be hopefully yeah. smooth and easy to do as soon as they have the supply of vaccine, they're ready to go. Yeah. So seeing that increased activity is very heartening. And I hope that all of you are seeing that kind of increased activity in your state as well, getting ready so that when the vaccines available you're Mm -hmm. not trying to play catch up with well how do we get this into people's arms no we have all the all the orange cones are lined up you know to do it and get it done quickly so let's talk about the bidening then shall we bidening Bidening. uh uh, this is from joe biden today on the twitter uh Uh he was rage tweeting about something somebody said about him on no he wasn't doing (laughs) that he wasn't (laughs) he just said today america is officially back in the paris climate agreement let's get to work Man, does that feel good? Mm-hmm. Uh, 5,000 National Guard troops will remain in Washington through mid-March amid concerns that QAnon followers believe Trump will return to office and be inaugurated as president of the United States for real. It's still going to happen. On March 4th, which, you know, is the original inauguration day. Uh... So. Meanwhile, black, back on the uh, on our planet, uh, <laughs> congressional Democrats have introduced the U.S. Citizenship Act of 2021, a Biden-backed bill to remake the U.S. immigration system and provide a path to citizenship for millions of undocumented Americans. The chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee, Representative Benny Thompson, is suing Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, and two extremist groups accusing them of conspiring to incite the riot on the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. They're uh, the- using a Ku Klux Klan law. They are. Isn't that isn't that just perfect? Mm -hmm. Uh, The Biden White House has pledged four billion dollars to an international effort to get coronavirus to low and middle income countries. Despite more than 190 countries participating in the covid program, the Trump administration had opted out because Trump is a vindictive asshole who hated the World Health Organization. Fifty two percent of voters approve of the job Biden is doing as president. 
in February of 2017, you know, after the whole inauguration crowd size debacle, uh-huh. uh, voters gave Trump a 38 percent approval rating. Now, was that before or after Joe Scarborough helped him with his first address to Congress? I forget. I'm <laughs> trying to remember. I do remember that a year ago next week, Donald Trump told the nation that he wanted to cut home heating assistance mm-hmm. and use the money to prepare for coronavirus. Yeah. That that was that was how he was going to do it. That's the way it gets done. Yeah. Uh, the White House said uh, President Biden would support efforts to establish the creation of a 9-11 type commission to investigate the January 6th uh, attack on the U.S. Capitol. Nancy Pelosi said Monday the House would move to establish an independent commission for Congress to get the truth of the American of the Capitol attack on the, I'm sorry, to get to the truth of the Capitol attack, as well as the interference with peaceful transition of power. Joe Biden extended the federal moratorium on home foreclosure through the end of June, saying the pandemic had triggered a housing affordability crisis. Yes. And, and back to Republican land, South Carolina has now banned virtually all abortions by law. And this is what state governments, state legislatures with Republican majorities are now doing. It's going to be guns, abortion, and voter ID. Because uh, Jesus. Georgia is trying now to pass a bill that ends no excuse absentee voting in the state. Just horrible. Meanwhile, in Illinois, Mike Madigan is resigning. And if you're and we from- could do a whole podcast on Mike Madigan. Yeah. Uh, suffice it to say, he's the old school uh, machine politician, a lot of graft and corruption and bribes and whatever, lot, all that going on. Uh, lately has just been a complete millstone around the Democratic Party in Illinois. Yes. Uh, and it machine politics in Illinois is on its way out. I do believe that. I know there are going to be people who disagree with me on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think there's a lot more transparency going on and people are watching the state house in a different way and expecting them to be a lot less corrupt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there seems to be more racial uh, diversity. Diversity. That's the word. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. A lot more racial diversity in the Democratic House caucus. Uh, and those black members of the House caucus are interested in change in the state uh, away from Madiganism. Uh, and we'll just see what happens. But um, Mike well, Madigan getting off stage is a very good thing for yeah. the state of Illinois. And to understand how big this story is here at the Capital City newspaper, which is where we live. It was the headline above the fold today. It was the headline on the front page below the fold today in a totally different story. And a third story inside the paper today. So it is They never do that. No. (laughs) They never do three stories on one one thing. Yeah. It's the end of an era. It really is. is. It really is. And it's about 20 years too late. But Mm -hmm. glad to Mm -hmm. see him go. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, The coronavirus pandemic has cut life expectancy in the U.S. by an entire year in the first half of 2020, the largest drop in life expectancy since World War II. Uh, I was talking with some colleagues about how I feel like my life expectancy was cut short by the Trump administration. But, you know, uh, I think a lot of people feel that way. And another Uh, 861,000 people filed for unemployment last week. That's up 13,000 from the previous week. Another 516,000 claims were filed last week for the pandemic unemployment assistance. That's basically unemployment insurance for gig and self-employed workers like us. mm Mm-hmm. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. But this week, we have two dogs, internet pups of the week, Lucy and Zeus. And looking at this picture, I asked them, what is your purpose in life? And they said, we're cute. What more do you need? That's really it. We're, We're just as cute as can be. And that's all you need to know. Lucy and Zeus are cute dogs. And we're so glad that one of our listeners sent them into us. You can visit Lucy and Zeus at our Facebook page and website. And of course, Lucy and Zeus Eat Freshly Poured Dog Food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct, your pets will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Lucy and Zeus. Oh, my Lord, they are cute. Uh, Lucy is a Pomeranian and Zeus is a, I know what 
breed he is, but he's a fluffy little white dog <laughs> and he's just as cute as can be. Uh, go visit them at our Facebook page and website. You can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, prolefpodcast at gmail.com, or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service, go postal unions. Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Hashtag save the post office. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. And it really is our job. So yeah. help but us it's out. Also, it's also a labor of love, Blue Gal. It's a labor of love. I had a, someone sent us an article about that, about um, the idea of making your job a labor of love instead of understanding it as labor and being paid for it. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I took that to heart a little bit because uh, it is important to be paid for your labor. Um, and I, I, I think there's a lot of employers that want to make people be in love with their job rather than just get paid for it. Yeah. Yeah. That was the point of that article. Anyway, we love doing this and we're grateful to you for your support. That's the point. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com for details, our PayPal postal address, Patreon, GoFundMe and merch. It's all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media. Thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Driftglass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties would like to reiterate that there is now a NASA helicopter on Mars. Or as as, as old school sci-fi people, on Barzoom. Let's think about living. Let's think about about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional F Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2021 DGBG Productions.